So hi, I'm Joe Wheeler. I'm a, a second year in the MFA in Transdisciplinary Design in Parsons the New School. Um, and specifically focusing on transmedia storytelling and how we can use media to engage audiences, raise awareness, and um, challenge discriminatory social norms. And so for ICI, what I was looking at was specifically in the context of international advocacy media, how can we, specifically me, as an outsider, um, come into communities and make representations via media, photography, videography, of groups of people in a way that's respectful and empowering, but still starts to demonstrate how kind of dire some of these circumstances are when you're looking at um, really systemic social issues. Um, but don't worry, I'm not going to talk too much about the nitty gritty theory of that. I'm going to show you guys what I did, and it's mostly pictures, so. Um, to do this, I got in contact with a really small human rights NGO called Nazdik. It was actually three female lawyers, all in their mid-30s, um, who started this organization and are super passionate about bringing justice closer to um, minorities and women, specifically in India. Um, so I was working with them on both um, some media advocacy campaigns as well as just general marketing for their organization. They're so small. They don't have much time to spend branding themselves, but obviously in the world of NGOs, funding is huge and how you let people know what you're doing is a big part of getting funding. Um, so here's the first example I have of kind of the work I was doing. Um, this is a photo of the Kaputli colony, which is an informal housing settlement in Delhi, um, where Nazdik is currently working. And if you think of a, a New Delhi slum, this might be the image that comes to mind. Um, but one thing you might not think about is the kind of community of empowered individuals and educated individuals who are working with Nazdiq um, to fight for their right to stay in their homes, um, currently facing wrongful eviction. What you would even be less likely to realize is that um, it's a community of artisans uh, that take their craft very seriously, completely actually translates to puppet, and there are a lot of puppeteers in the um, colony. This is Puran Bhatt, who is a nationally recognized puppeteer. He's met the president. He's been to Europe, Canada, and America. And you would never think that this is someone who would live in a New Delhi slum. At least I wouldn't. And you can see his beautiful puppets that he made and took the time to show us. And that's his son. Um, the next big thing I did was I uh, helped Nazdik document the workshops they're running. This is a workshop they did with 25 women from um, Gold Market Informal Housing Settlement and Neng Loi. That's wrong, uh, but um, these are 25 very active and passionate women who are um, working to know their rights regarding wrongful evictions. Um, so these, yeah. These are the photos of the workshop itself, which went really well, although none of it was in English, so I assume it went really well. I was told it went really well. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Nazdik uh, put these photo, this photo series on um, their website and on Facebook and got 40 likes, which they said was the most likes that they've ever received, and they were blown away by that. So you can really see how kind of a small effort towards this can really go a long way for a small organization. And she was the only workshop participant who actually enjoyed letting me take pictures of her. <laughs> and that's a marker on her face, not some weird scar or anything. Uh, one of the next projects I worked on was a series of infographics to help kind of bolster the campaigns Nastik is currently working on. Um, specifically, they're working in Assam, India, um, in tea plantations, looking at minimum wage. And this is starting to illustrate the daily wage in Assam compared to other tea producers, compared to the cost of Assam brand um, tea. Um, you can see the workers in Assam receive uh, about $1.57 per day for plucking tea. That's eight hours of work. Um, compared to other places in India where they're paid much better, but still pretty bad. Um, compared to what we would pay here in New York to buy that tea, um, just a single pack. So kind of using visuals to start to illustrate that uh, inequality. 
Um, this was a breakdown of the daily wage on top of the uh, 94 rupees per day that they're earning. They actually, uh, team managers deduct from their wage costs for um, retirement, food rations, and electricity, and this is actually against the law according to the Indian Constitution, but it happens anyway. So the take-home pay is closer to 70 rupees per day, obviously not a livable wage. Um, and then this is a follow-up to that previous infographic that's breaking down the new wage that Nazdik is proposing to be the new base minimum wage in Assam and in tea gardens across India. Um, the next big project I worked on was a write-up um, regarding the same tea campaign. Um, and it actually was published in the Hindustan Times, you can see, that's my name, right. as a co-author. <laughs> um, and it was published. <laughs> So this was huge for me in terms of my career. This is my first publication, and it was very exciting to make this happen. Um, read it, it'll be on ICI soon. Uh, and the last thing I worked on, uh, Nazdik just received a grant with uh, Every Mother Counts, and they work on maternal mortality around the world. And Nazdik is the first organization that they've sponsored in India. And one of the requirements of that grant was that Nazdik puts out uh, storytelling regarding the work they're doing in India. So I worked with them to make a long-term strategy of how they can present their work via photography, videography, and blog posts, trying to balance some of the harder work like making videos with easier stuff like blog posts and timing it over the course of the year-long grant so that it was manageable for them as a group of three working mainly with freelance um, artists and designers. Um, and then I made the first installment of that, which was a photo series. I did not take these photos. I can't take credit for them. They're amazing. Um, I didn't have a chance to go to Assam. But looking over the photos that they had, again, from other freelancers, I combined them into this photo series that they released on the Every Mother Counts website, both as kind of raising awareness of what Nazdik is doing and pitching the work there. Um, so again, it's looking at maternal mortality, so this is the uh, hospitals in Assam. But again, we're trying to represent kind of the full picture of this and not just the sadness of it. So this is the cover of the campaign, and I think it's good to show that these are healthy and happy people that are in circumstances that are pretty unacceptable. and in a lot of ways out of their control, but that doesn't mean that they're constantly looking sadly at cameras. They're also happy with beautiful babies. Um, but I didn't just work while I was in Delhi. Did I even say I was in Delhi? I might have skipped over that. I was in New <laughs> Delhi, India the whole time. Sorry. Um, I got to have delicious chai tea every morning from my <laughs> B&B. Um, and I did some tourist stuff around Delhi. This is um, Humayun's tomb. It was beautiful, it actually inspired the Taj Mahal, but very few tourists were there, um, as illustrated by me chilling with Humayun alone inside the tomb. Uh, and it was like empty, and that was amazing to me that I got to experience this without any of the crowds. Um, this is Kutub Manir, and it's in South Delhi. It's an archaeological complex with this really beautiful spire at the middle. This is Jantar Mantar, which is maybe not as impressive, but I'm a big fan. Um, it's a bunch of architecture installments that are oriented for astrology, so looking at stargazing. And I was an architecture undergrad major, so I had to swing by and check this out because it's totally bizarre, but really cool. <laughs> and then I also visited uh, Red Fort, which is kind of the famous site in Delhi. And it was packed. This is right after Independence Day, so they're still taking down some of the stuff for that. Um, and then on my last day, when I was totally fried and stressed from the chaos of India and Delhi, I went to the Baha'i International Center, they have a, the Lotus Temple there, and sat for about two hours. It's a silent meditation hall, and they do a kind of interreligious um, service, and it was so beautiful, really peaceful, and a great way to spend my last afternoon in India. And yeah. That's what I did with my 26 days. Yeah. Thank you, Joe.